Hi everyone, I'm Heather with Burner Babies, and today we're going to talk about grooming, uh, mostly the Burner Doodle, and uh, the type of shampoo that we use, and the type of tools that we use, uh, and things that hopefully you'll find helpful. So we'll first start with uh, shampoo. So here we use Green Groom, and this is something that um, my groomer actually uses when I take my dogs to her, and I like the smell of it. And one great thing about Green Groom, is that you actually dilute it. And so you use a little bit of shampoo and then a lot of water. And so you'll have to also get the mixing bottle. And so, you know, a bottle like this size would last somebody with one dog uh, quite a while. I only have a couple of these. Mine actually are in big gallon jugs. <laughs> and we use the odor eliminator, white dog, and then the uh, pink conditioner. So green groom is what we use. And then after bath time, um, and after you kind of towel dry, then you can spray on this, and this is called The Stuff for Dogs. And what this does is it helps keep their uh, coat a little bit shiny after the bath, looking like they were just freshly groomed. It also has a nice, pleasant smell. All right, just sit down, just sit down. So next, going into the brushes and the types of tools that we use to groom um, our burner doodles around here, the first thing I'm gonna tell you about is what not to use. So this is the Ferminator. I'm sure you guys have all heard of this. Um, I feel like this was a very expensive brush. I think it was like $65 or, or just something really ridiculous. I, I hate using this brush. I feel like it pulls on the dogs and um, I maybe used this twice and then I decided that uh, maybe I should use something else. So I don't like the Ferminator. If you have the Ferminator, just throw it away. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is what to use. And so these are slicker brushes. Uh, they just look like this. They're fairly inexpensive. You can kind of see this one still has hair in it. Um, but these are just slicker brushes. And so when you brush the dog, it collects the hair. It's very gentle. It doesn't really pull. Um, and then like this one has a button. Yep, I know. Uh, has a button where if you were just to push it, all the hair would come off. And being that Theo's a burn and doodle. Oh, by the way, this is Theo. Isn't he handsome? This is Theo. Um, all the hair would just fall off, but since Theo is a Bernie Doodle, there is not much hair. But this is great. Um, and this one here is also a slicker brush, but it's tiny. You can see that my dogs have chewed on it. Um, and this is really great, kind of like behind and underneath the ears, where it's a little bit smaller of an area. But we use this one all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um... So the next thing that we use quite a bit is, is honestly just a, a regular hairbrush. And so this is really nice. Can I see your face? Can I see your face? So I would use the little slicker brush first on his beard, and then I would use the regular hairbrush. Come over here, hey, let me see your face. Then I would just use the regular hairbrush to kind of brush through that beard a little bit to make sure I didn't miss any knots. Um, but mostly on him, I would use the slicker brush and that includes his tail. So all varieties and sizes of slicker brushes. Okay, watch out, mom's, mom's trying to do something, okay? Um, next, we sometimes use just a regular comb. Um, this is actually a dog comb because I don't know if you can tell, but the bristles on this side are a little bit further spaced apart than on this side. Um, and so this kind of helps if you have a, a fairly easy knot to get out or if the dogs are wet um, and have a little bit longer coat where you, you're not having to like pull and brush quite a bit. So there's that. We also have an array of scissors. So I, I also have a um, curved pair of scissors that I was not in my grooming bag, so I don't know what I did with that. <laughs> but that is where if you're going to groom your own dog, that you would just scissors kind of, come over here if you, can I see your face? Put your face down, come here. That you would scissors kind of around the eyes um, and that curvature of the scissors just helps to not, you know, poke out their eye because the pointy part points away at, from their eye as you're scissoring. So scissors are a great tool. Um, hair scissors, I just got, I think mine I have to hear my mouth. I think I just got mine on Amazon, and so that um, it was just like a, a dog grooming scissor kit, which had a lot of great tools in it. So the next thing we're going to talk about are um, 
clippers. And so this is something that I just picked up at my, lo my local um, farm and home store. It's like $10. This is great, especially like behind the ears. If you happen to have missed a, a knot behind the ears, this will help you get that out and fairly quickly. Are you getting down? No pieces. But this one, this is what my groomer suggested. And as you can kind of tell from this video, I do whatever she says. <laughs> um, so this is an Andy's clipper. And this is really easy to clean. You'll just have to make sure to cool the blades if you're gonna use it for a long time and make sure that you just clean the blades after each use. Uh, that way you get the, the longest use out of it as possible. I believe that this was about $200, well worth it. I had kind of a junky one before that we were constantly fighting with and this one has really made our lives a lot easier. So the next tool I'm gonna show you is I feel like a secret weapon for a dog. And that is this. So the, this is a dematting tool. I don't know if you can see that very well or not. So you would just put your thumb here and then you kind of rake through. And what these little combs here does, what they do, sorry, what they do is kind of break up and uh, shave the mat. And so you can just kind of, um, can you come over here? Come see mom, can you come see mom? So let's just say Theo's beard was matted up. You could just do this and it's gonna cut through any knot that he may have. Um, it does not hurt, it does, well, I mean it could hurt if you pull too hard, but uh, using this tool usually makes the grooming process, if there's a mat or a knot, a lot less stressful for you and for the dog. So before we get into um, the next portion, I just wanna kinda say just something very quickly that I did not know until my groomer told me about it. Uh, she had had somebody else's dog experience this and so she was just kinda telling me about it so that when I was brushing my dogs, I was aware. So, can I see you just for a second? It's a good boy, yeah, good boy. <laughs> nope, sit down, good job, okay. So when you're brushing your dog, okay, and Theo is short, and um, here in a minute I'll show you his whole body. So as you're brushing, you know, I'm not pulling Theo's hair, I'm not pulling his skin, he's not knotted. But if I were to get to an area, let's say he wasn't matted very badly, and as I sit and I pull and I pull and I pull and I brush through trying to, you know, get this the hair nice and uh, smooth again, you actually can pull the top layer of skin away from the other layers of skin. This is extremely painful. It can cause a lot of infection and it's just a, a very bad deal for the dog. So make sure that when you are brushing that you are aware of how hard you're actually pulling. Um, you know, at least my dogs, I, I could probably accidentally cut them and I wouldn't even know it. Um, they just let me do whatever I want to do. So if you are pulling and it's hurting, they may not even tell you. So you have to be very mindful of what you are doing while you're grooming. Um, especially with like the doodle, the burner doodles and the Bernie's mountain dogs, they are just not big complainers unless you are really hurting them. And so you have to be mindful and aware, uh, that way you don't end up hurting uh, them accidentally. So just be very mindful and don't really pull and, you know, uh, repeatedly pull, especially in the same area. If there's a mat that you can't get out by using um, the dematting tool, cut it. That way you don't injure the dog, they're not stressed out, and the grooming can still ma be maintained as a positive and fun thing. So there's that. So I'm just going to briefly hit pause and then I'm going to turn the, actually we'll just do, yeah, I think I have to turn the camera. Uh, so I'll just briefly hit pause and then I'll let you see Theo's whole body and um, you can kind of see his cut. So he is cut um, very short. Uh, so I only keep them, here, I'm gonna just, <laughs> I just gonna turn it like that. So I keep Theo's beard intact, I keep his ears long and I keep his tail long. And that's really, um, for low maintenance. If I never brushed his ears or his beard or his tail in between groomings, it probably wouldn't be a huge deal. Um, not gonna have to shave his ears or his face because it's too matted to get through with a comb. Uh, and I get Theo groomed every six weeks. So he is constantly at the groomer. Um, in fact, he goes next week and when I show you his whole body, you'll see that he's not very short. 
Um, he's not mad at it at all. It's just it's easier for it on him and it's easier on me if he has a nice maintained coat. So I'm gonna hit pause and then I'll show you Theo's whole body and you can see his whole haircut. So bear with us. So this is Theo's whole body. Whoop. Can you, there we go. Can you not, there we go. <laughs> so this is Theo's whole haircut. You can kind of see uh, that he's got the long beard, long tail, and uh, long ears. Yeah, and you're so handsome, aren't you, Theo? Yeah, are you so handsome? Huh, are you such a handsome boy? Yeah. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show you is if you do want to keep your burner doodle long, um, there's a different method so that you don't inadvertently end up with a matted dog. And so again, I'm going to hit pause and I'm actually going to bring out one of my Bernie's Mountain Dogs. That way um, you can see the difference. My burner doodles are shaped short, so I don't have a good example other than the Bernie's Mountain Dog. So um, again, I'm going to hit pause and when I come back, I'll have a Bernie's Mountain Dog. <laughs> So this is Mishka, um, and what I'm going to show you is she does need brush right now. So if she were a doodle and you were keeping her hair coat long, you would first do just, um, actually I'm going to use the other brush. First you would just do like a surface brushing, and then depending on how long your burn -a doodle is, You'll actually spread. Oh, thank you, Mishka. You'll actually spread the hair, and then little by little, which takes a little while, but if you want your burner doodle to be long, it does take a lot of maintenance. So you'll just again brush the surface, but then you'll spread the coat and make sure you're getting all the way to the skin. Your hair is just not very long, Mama. I tried to get Iroquois to come out, but he didn't want to be around Theo, so. So again, you'll just brush the top layer, but to make sure that you're getting all the way down to the skin, I'm just gonna come a little closer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My dogs aren't normally um, supposed to be on camera, I guess. Yeah, you're just not used to it, are you? No, you're just not used to it. So uh, you'll just, <laughs> come here, Mishka. This just is not working out very well. Iroquois would have been a much better example. Yeah, he would have been. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he was kind of being naughty, wasn't he? So you'll just, here, hold on. Pause. <laughs> okay, I moved the camera down a little bit. <laughs> Come here, Mishka. Mishka, Come here, Mama. Come here. Good girl. Okay, so then you'll just spread the coat so that you're at the skin level and you'll just gently brush each direction. And so what you're doing when you do that is making sure that you actually are getting to the skin because what has happened quite often um, is that we just brush the top layer and that's nice and smooth, but then the dog gets to the groomer and your groomer says, the dog is matted and now I have to shave um, him or her. So I'm gonna just go grab Theo again, and then um, I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're back with Theo. So um, again, I just wanna reiterate that, you know, you'll spread the hair apart and you'll brush one side and then the other. And, and that really is to make sure that your dog is not matting um, and so that you don't get a big, big surprise at the groomer. Um, I cannot stress to you how important it is to get all the way down to the skin. Um, they do have a very, excuse you, they do have a very thick coat. And so it is very easily matted, especially um, in like the F1Bs, for example, where they have that tighter curl. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. And if you, <laughs> and if you need links to like Amazon or something, let me know. I'll be more than happy to post those in the comments. So, Theo, <laughs> he says hi. Okay, so um, thanks again for watching, and I'm sure I'll have more later. Bye, everyone.